In Hawke's Bay and around the country, the honey industry has been booming, with export values increasing about 400% over 10 years, thanks to the premium from Manuka Honey. But are these golden years over? Some say the industry is going from boom to bust. There's about half a million hives too many in New Zealand at the moment. Um, that's 250,000 million extra bees in summer, all looking for flowers. There's a finite number of flowers that a finite number of hives can work economically. It wasn't so bad up till a couple of years ago when prices of honey were very high, but prices of honey have come back considerably, including for Manuka. Despite all the hype you hear, there's a lot of, there's hundreds of tons of Manuka sitting in beekeeper sheds that they can't sell at the moment. So when you've got too many hives, you get lower production. I keep a 10 year average. I've got averages going back for over 60 years and my 10 year average is just plummeting the last few years. And it's, some of it's to do with weather, but most of it's just to do with just too many hives. So we're going from a boom to a bust. Oh, a real bust. Last year I had a, I didn't have a huge crop, but I had a reasonable honey crop. And it didn't even cover my expenses. So no wages for me for the whole year and it didn't even cover my expenses. And my costs are pretty low because I've been doing this a long time. I know how to keep costs right down. You know, I had to, to break into my savings to keep, to feed my hives this spring. The increased feeding is thanks to the many newcomers to the industry. The majority chasing Manuka honey, which can fetch many times more money than non-Manuka honey. A 230 gram jar of Manuka honey measuring very high in the honey's unique ingredient said to be health giving, was recently on sale for $5,000 in Harrods of London. Beehives in New Zealand produce on average about 28 kilograms of honey a year. Hawke's Bay is a popular place to keep beehives over winter because of its dry climate and there's pollination work to be picked up. But with hive numbers increasing and bees flying kilometers for food, it's getting crowded. In the past, beekeepers respected each other's sites and you didn't put hives within two miles of each other. Now it's just, people just put hives anywhere. It's, there's nothing illegal about it. If the farmer, if a landowner gives you permission to put hives there, you can put hives there. A lot of the corporate hives, they'll all leave Hawke's Bay. They'll go over to, a few will go into the local mountains where they compete with other local hives, but most of them will go to Taranaki, places like that. They'll get their manuka honey and they say, oh, well, our hives aren't here during the honey flow. You know, you're still getting your honey crop. The reality is those hives are on site for usually about 10 months of the year. They're only gone for two months. This time of year, in the past, a yard might have fed themselves quite nicely on willow and that sort of thing. So at least, you know, you're not gaining honey this time of year, but you're not having to feed the hives. Now with a whole lot of hives dumped on top of you, you have to feed those hives. That's extra expense. And with the price of honey, half or less than it was two years ago. It's costing more to keep hives than, than what you're making. You know, I've got a yard down Tico, I run 16 hives in. Come in there one day and two paddocks away, there was 180 hives. I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Rare New Zealand's owners have been in the honey industry for seven years. After Michael Malloy left another Manuka chasing honey company to start his own with his brother, and a mate from uni. They share a percentage of their manuka harvest with landowners. So there's been a boom, might there be a bust? Uh, yeah, I believe that the industry's gonna come through a bit of a, um, bit of a re-adjusting couple of years sort of thing, and then it will settle down for a bit, hopefully. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of honey sitting in people's sheds that um, we're just, yeah, start, starting to try and starting to build up after years and years and people were questioning whether they're going to do it again. Is any of it manuka honey in sheds? Yep, there's some, there's some, a uh, lot of the lower grade manuka, there's been a, a lot of it around in the past few years and it hasn't, um, it's probably been moving overseas as fast as it needs to be to, to keep up. Yeah. Over the last few years there's been hundreds of little companies pop up making different types of manuka honey and um, a lot of them can struggle to sell it on the wholesale market so they sort of diversify and try and 
put a brand together and um, just at the moment with no tourists coming through New Zealand um, that's one of the big channels that would have been um, moving a lot of manuka so it's just yeah there's a lot of competition within the same space locally but overseas there's um, yeah, plenty of opportunity to be had. Adding to industry woes is concerned the bee parasite Varroa mite is growing resistant to treatment. Last autumn and winter some beekeepers lost uh, um, you know, up to 50% of their hives because the strips just didn't work. And we're not talking about one or two hives here, we're talking about 10, 20, 30,000 hives. Um, I know three beekeepers in Hawke's Bay that lost over 50% of their hives. While those on the bee front say fortunes are changing, on paper, the industry is still growing strong. To the end of June, honey exports totaled $482 million up from just $98 million 10 years earlier. But for many in the industry, honey is a whole lot more than just money. It's something that is really, really, really rewarding. You, you, can, you can go into a beehive, you can create a beehive, you can add a queen to it, you can, you can work it and, and manipulate it and, and let it be a beehive as well at the same time. All right? And you can come back to it in, in a month or two months or what have you. And, it can actually produce a lot of honey at the end of it, you know. It's, it's, it's actually a rewarding thing to be able to create something from nature and and come back to it and say, hey, this is actually, this is this is natural and it's, it's something that's good, you know. Apiculture New Zealand says it has no doubt that COVID-19 has further increased demand for honey globally as consumers seek a natural, healthy food source. Patrick O'Sullivan, Local Focus. Yeah.